we have new trigger warnings in universities, may contain Christian teachings. Uh, Father David Palmer is a priest in the Ordinariate of Our Lady of Walsingham and also a chaplain to the university students in Nottingham, at the University of Nottingham. And he joins us now, Father David Palmer. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Now, I understand... <laughs> I mean, where to start with this? The Telegraph published an article saying the Canterbury Tales uh, give a trigger warning over expressions of Christian faith. Now, the University of Nottingham is accused of being ludicrous and weird by religious charities. And I would probably back that statement up. I think it's, it is ludicrous and weird to mark old Christian works, such as the Canterbury Tales, that are part of the English canon, to mark them as a trigger warning of expressions of Christian faith. Uh, and now you obviously work in uh, the University of Nottingham as one of their chaplains. What's been the uh, response on the ground? Well, I mean, from my, I'm the Catholic chaplain, so I deal primarily with Catholic students, and it was they who actually brought it to my attention. And, and they've been really quite, um, obviously, I think, upset by it. Um, partly on the grounds, I think, that it, it seems to be a kind of constant, well, constant, but it's not the first time that the university has has come down on, on expressions of the Christian faith, and particularly the Catholic faith, actually. But this, this almost goes beyond offensive to, to just ridiculous. I mean, it's almost embarrassing. The Canterbury Tales is a story about a group of pilgrims traveling to Canterbury Cathedral to, to venerate the shrine of St. Thomas of Becket. Um, and any university student who chooses to study the Canterbury Tales, one would hope they're supposed to be clever, that they would already understand that it's going to contain expressions of Christian faith by the very nature. I mean, it's the most ridiculous text, really, to give any sort of content warning about on those grounds. Well, I like it in particular because the Canterbury Tales are, as you say, about Sir Thomas Beckett and a pilgrimage to his shrine, which was uh, a couple of hundred years prior to this being written. Um, but Thomas Beckett, of course, was the original troublesome priest, wasn't he? And, uh, yes, <laughs> I think there are many parallels between you and yeah, I and, yeah, and people yeah. who speak out for the Christian yeah, faith these days. Yeah. Um, I've had you on the show a, a couple of times over the years uh, on different platforms, but it does seem to be a repeated offence, particularly up in Nottingham, that mm. Christianity is seen as somehow other. Mm. Now, we, we are still a Christian country, and I know mm. the official state church is, is the Church of England, but and you operate within the Roman Catholic Church, but mm. it is the Christian faith that is still the official faith of this land. How have mm. we reached a point where we have mainstream universities, such as the University of Nottingham, seeing it as something that needs to be warned against? Yeah, um, I don't know, is one of the answers, but what I also find absolutely fascinating is the sense that they don't even seem to it doesn't even seem to occur to them that that what they're saying might be controversial. I mean, it's almost like they're surprised when somebody feels upset or challenges or, or questions the narrative. There seems to be an assumption, and maybe it's lots of universities, but I think nothing seemingly particularly so, that Christianity is obviously something that everybody agrees is a bad thing, you know, an offensive thing. Um, and, and that is just... I mean, it's bizarre. I mean, the university itself uh, was dedicated. The buildings were built by a guy called Jesse Boot, Sir Jesse Boot, and he had the inscription on the clock tower of the university. This is to the glory of God and education in the liberal arts. Um, and the people that the, that are there now seem to have no concept whatsoever of the fact that the university itself is is a Christian foundation. That's what university what universities came out of the church, and it's just it's like it's been a complete kind of break from historical understanding of our own culture and our society it's like they just don't know um and that's really quite frightening it's, it's like kind of almost invincible ignorance and i it, it's very strange and i don't i don't have a straightforward answer um and in part of it of course is trying to the whole sort of diversity thing and christianity although it is <laughs> part of diversity by very nature is almost not seen as that it's you know like christianity is seen as as the past and I, it's, it, but it's it's very disturbing yeah and I, I don't know what what the answer is but I know for Christian students at Nottingham University a lot of them feel very uncomfortable because the environment feels a bit hostile if you're a traditional Christian to put it bluntly I'm sorry to hear that and 
And you're right. If if people are arguing for diversity, surely that means adding other cultures to an existing culture, such as the Christian faith, and, and, and incorporating in a university setting that there may be people that are Sikh, Hindu, or other faiths, and bringing them aboard and acknowledging that the Christian faith is the predominant faith. But it seems to me today that diversity means removing what was mm. and replacing it with mm. something new. Mm. It's interesting. So does the clock tower say, um, is it AMDG or is it... Uh, what is, what's no, the wording on the clock? Think, no, it may be AM and DG, actually. I think it probably is, actually. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's also, that's another point. Is there, a, is there a part of our canon that has been removed? Are we no longer teaching um, that, the, that the, as you rightly pointed out, that the universities were set up by Catholics, the hospitals were set up by Catholics, the first schools in the country were set up by Catholics. All of this infrastructure that we now take for granted was set up by the Catholic faith. Have we forgotten that somehow? Yeah, and I think it's all part of the wider the wider picture, isn't it? That this kind of um, a lack, of, a loss of confidence, I guess, in in the Christian civilization and and the descendants, the Western civilization that in many ways descended from that Christian civilization, and we seem to have come to a place where um, the education system teaches that everything that built who we are is somehow bad or suspect or or to be deconstructed or to be pulled down. Um, and so I think there's a genuine, both philosophical and, and spiritual um, battle, to be honest, going on. Well, I'm pleased to see that students are protesting against this. Yeah. And uh, so a bunch of Catholic students at the University of Nottingham have said that this is an anti-Christian red alert. And it's and they, what they pointed out was something that I hadn't even considered, that there's no trigger warning for anti-Semitism, cannibalism, poisoning, yeah. hanging, beheading, and suicide in other literary works. But yeah. there is a trigger warning for Christianity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and can you imagine any other context where, I mean, I mean, this is almost a cliche to say, but it's a cliche because it's true. You, you, I cannot imagine a module giving some sort of content warning because it may contain Islamic themes or, or you know, Jewish themes or atheist themes even. You know, um, Christianity uniquely seems to be seen as as a problem um yeah so what the university is implicitly saying there is that christianity is no longer appropriate for the for the modern context or the modern student uh, and what response are these students having that are protesting against the university well they, they issued a, um, a statement uh, which was quite you know clear um they i i, I and some of the things they they're discussing they haven't done yet but um they they aren't they're not Giving it up, I think, is the best way of putting it. They 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 intend to um, keep on pushing away um, to get their voice heard. And it's it. well later on in the show. I'm talking about some obvious oppression and persecution of Christians around the world, such as in Pakistan. So this isn't at that level, but this does seem like intolerance towards Christianity, and that yeah. doesn't breed a, a good environment for Christians, as well, particularly for Catholics. Absolutely. What I mean, you seen? As sure, Chapman, we're, we're seeing it as well with the kind of sign of prayers and stuff, aren't we? As well, it's not yeah. you know it, it's wider than just one institution, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. There are all these things add together. When people are arrested for silently prayer, praying, or for saying "God bless," uh, that's seen as criminalized behavior these days. All of these things add up together to an intolerant uh, atmosphere around Christianity. Now, as as a Catholic chaplain, are you seeing a response to that? Are more young people coming to you, coming to the church, coming to faith? Yeah, actually, I have to say there, there is there is a there is a sort of um, yes is the answer. And what I've had the last couple of years, and I've got another group, we're starting a course soon for adults wanting to become Catholic, of whom quite a few are students. And what we're increasingly finding is people actually coming to the Catholic Church, almost not because of a faith thing, but because of a feeling that something's gone wrong in society, um, and that somehow if everyone's sort of attacking the Catholic Church, then perhaps that's something to explore, uh, which is, I mean, you know, quite, quite, that's quite a definite thing that's happening at the moment, which I do find fascinating. Yeah. God yeah. works, God uses whatever he has, you know, so. There's an old quote that I can't quite remember about, um, if the Catholic faith is the most attacked faith, there must be something in that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, well, I suppose you must have atheists coming to you and people from other faiths coming to you, but also at a time when the Church of England is apostate and we have the Archbishop of Canterbury saying he no longer teaches the Christian teaching and actually rejects it, you must have a lot of Anglicans coming over to you as well. We do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we have a steady, a steady stream. I don't want to, 
yeah, we, but we do have a steady stream of Anglicans. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that there is a home for people that want the, the Orthodox Christian yeah. faith. Um, but how long will that exist? How long will your role, you know, university chaplains, be a thing in this in this post-Christian country? Yeah, I mean, obviously the church will always um, provide pastoral and spiritual care for students at universities. Um, I think the question is how long that will be something done in conjunction with universities or when, when it will become something that's done independently. And in some places that's already the case. So at Edinburgh University, for example, the chaplaincy, Catholic chaplaincy provision is run entirely off campus. Um, I think that would be a sad day in some ways. But of course, if you get to a stage where you can't actually um, profess the beliefs of the church within a structure, then you have to come outside of that structure. It's more important that we are free to be who we are than have goodwill from secular institutions. Yes. And are you able to do processions? Do you have... Uh... Do you, do you have that kind of activity going on on campus? We is have the Blessed we, Sacrament on campus. The Blessed Sacrament is on campus, and we, we we have had processions, but to be honest, we've just done them. We haven't um, <laughs> um, asked whether we can or not. We just do. So um, yeah. So so far. Well, I, I find that very pleasing. I'm always trying to find the good news in these situations because we get more and more bad news. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm pleased that there is a there's a strong Catholic element at the University of Nottingham and, and the, the, the body of Christ is present there, which will, of course, have an impact on the people around him. And so thank you, Father, for everything you're doing. Up my there. pleasure. Thank God you. Bless you. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you for watching my Common Sense Crusade. If you'd like to watch the whole show, you can subscribe to lotuseaters.com for as little as £5 per month, and then you get access to a bank of content as well. My show is 3pm every Thursday. See you there. Deus Fault. <laughs>